You're a strange one, sir. It must be something special to convince you to return. Although, if I had a Goomba that cute waiting for me at the dock, I might return too. Well, whatever you're doing, be careful. Goodbye, sir. Long time no see, Mario. I'm totally glad I got to see you again. This is awesome. Everyone's ready. We heard you were coming, so we've been waiting here for you. So, are you ready to go? Whenever you want or wherever you want to go, we are so there with you. Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Paper Mario Thousand Year Door. In the last episode, we beat the game, and in this episode, we're going to see what there is to do after the game. Which isn't all that much, but we're going to do it, of course. No idea what Mario's actually doing back here. There was something about looking for treasure, but I don't know. I guess they forgot about that. If you start your file after finishing the game, you get that scene. You get all of your partners back, just the way you left them. You get all of your items, just the way you left them. And everything that you've already had, recipes, badges, <clears throat> is exactly how it left off. I don't think I even mentioned it, but we have finished the badge log. We've got them all. The last one we got was a PFD down partner. So let's see what there is to do around here now that the game's over. Like I said, the answer is not much. The biggest thing that's changed is there's now a few more troubles in the trouble center. So let's go on ahead and see what we can do about that. A lot of this episode is going to be me cutting, doing out, know, sorting my inventory, shopping until I get the shop points that I need, finishing the, uh, the recipes, stuff like that. I've decided I'm going to let myself cheat just a little bit with the recipes. I'm going to cook up some mysteries and see if I can get anything good. Doty, roust these cads. I really wanted to see the great tree, but there are many cads in the way. Won't someone please roust these ne'er-do-wells? I am waiting in Bogley Woods near the great tree. Well, we'll take on that trouble. This, uh... I don't quite understand why this trouble is post-game trouble. You'll see what I mean. It is really very easy, uh, much easier than we should be dealing with at this point of the game. But yeah, we're, uh, we're finished with the main story. How's it feel? It's nice for me knowing that this whole, this project is, you know, wrapping up and I won't have to, it, it won't be in my mind anymore. I'll be able to look forward. I am already going through and preparing for the next game. There might be a longer break than usual between series. In the past, I've actually haven't had a break at all. I've just gone straight from one to the next. We'll, we'll see. Maybe I'll do that this time. We'll see how far in advance I can get. But don't be totally surprised if there's a little bit of a break. All right, so he's not at the Great Tree. He is near the Great Tree. I believe. Oh, is he all the way back? Oh, do you know what? Okay, so he's actually at the pipe by the near by uh, where we come in here. That's fine. So basically, what we need to do is we just need to clear out all the enemies on the way to uh, to see him. Where is my bump attack badge? Here it is. Yes, you can use bump attack for this. And yes, I'm pretty sure if you clear them all out before you talk to them, it still counts. Yep, there we go. Done already, eh? Marvelous! I can finally see the great tree. I'm in your debt, sir. It isn't much, but I hope this will do, f uh, will do for your troubles. It's my change from lunch. 20 coins. Perhaps I'll see you up ahead. Uh, wonderful post-game trouble. Really not anything worth speaking of. I don't know. I wonder I wonder what they were thinking with some of these. I think if you go to the Great Tree, he is there. So, uh, let's go find out. I guess our reward can be an extra character with some extra dialogue. Yeah, there he is. Ah, the great tree. As you watch us foolishly continue to repeat history, what could you think of us? You can do nothing but stand and watch our ignorance. No, what rot! To assume that a tree can do nothing, that only proves my own foolishness. Uh-huh. That's Doti, the, to the toad who asked us for help. I'm so glad he finally got to see this place, you know? Yeah, I guess. That was not 
all that interesting. I don't think I'm going to cut to the trouble center. We're close enough. There's going to be one that I'm going to be doing a really big cut for, so uh, let's just hang out for a bit. Actually, while I'm here, let me check my recipe log. Because we just got a bunch of free ultra shrooms and jam and jellies. So we've got all the shroom stuff. Alright, there is one thing already I can see that I know for sure we're going to be able to do. I'm going to keep bump attack on for now. Get rid of these guys. They are no match for us. We defeated the Shadow Queen. I love that boss battle, by the way. I love the music. I actually have the music on my phone. I listen to it sometimes. Just in general, it's got a great atmosphere, very high stakes. The only problem I have with the whole thing is that, like, a third of it is cutscene, which is cool the first time. But if you die to the fight, or if you're playing on repeat playthroughs, it gets annoying having to sit through all that again. Very cool scene, though. Scenes, multiple. Alright, what's next? Bub, help me make up. I got in a fight with my mom, and I need you to help me make up with her. I'll be waiting near the Sanctum in Poshley Heights. Alright, I've been holding on to an item just for this trouble. And I have room to take it, so I don't have to worry about organizing my inventory just yet. So, uh, let's stop by the shop before we go see little Bub. I like that we get to interact with Bub again. He's a cute character, and the game does kind of, like, go on about how he's... Not special, but like a character of note, you know? Ah, here's Super Luigi 5. Might as well buy that now while we're here. That is the last Super Luigi book. You will never have to worry about the mushroom slot in this shop being taken over ever again. Oh yeah, I got a bunch of these. I think this was just for experimentation. Where is it? There it is. I've been holding on to this Keel Mango. And you don't have to use a Keel Mango for this treasure. I just... I like using it. You'll see, there's, uh, basically you have, um, you have the option to give one of several items, and I just find the Keel Mango to be a really easy one to get. So, uh, let's, let's actually go down this way. We don't usually take this route to get to the blue pipes. I'm curious to know what people thought of this game going through. I'm guessing that people who are watching have probably played it already, but... If there's somebody who was seeing it for the first time, did you like it? Do you want to play it yourself? I always hope that, well, maybe not always, but a lot of the times with Let's Plays, I hope that the idea is that some people will watch and decide they want to play the game for themselves. The point isn't just to show off a thing so nobody has to ever do it or get it themselves. It's hopefully to build some love for the game. Here's Bob. I've been waiting for you, mister. See, I got in a fight with my mom, and I want to make it up to her. So I wrote her a letter, and I want to give her a present. But I don't know what to get. I've narrowed it down to three things, so could you help me decide? Shroom cake you have to use cooking for. Fright mask you have to pay for. Keel mangoes are free. You've got great taste, so I'm sure it'll go over well. You also have to go find it and bring it here. Because, you know, they don't sell those things here. Well, that's why I've been holding on to it. Did you bring a keel mango for my mom? Yahoo! A keel mango! Thanks, mister! I'll just attach this letter, and... We're done! But I'm afraid to give it to her. She may still be mad. Can you give it to her and come back, please? You got a present. The thing Bub asked you to deliver to Sylvia. You got it, Bub. Oh, what does he say now? I wonder if she'll like it. What will I do if she's still mad? Now I'm all nervous. The item that you use to give to Sylvia does not change the results of the trouble at all. So you can give anything and it's exactly the same. It's not like one's better than the other. I just find the Keel Mango the easiest and the cheapest to get my hands on. Why, hello, Gonzales. Do you need something? From little Bub, you say? Why, there's a letter. Let me just read it. Dear lovely Mama, I'm sorry I didn't do my homework. From now on, I'll do my homework and I'll try to be a good bob like Papa. And I will give you good food and a nice house. And a pretty hat. So please don't hate me. From Bub. Oh, I'm just going to break down and cry here. Oh, how delightful. Wah!
Oh, Gonzalez, don't mind my tears. They are joyful ones. I just want you to tell Bub something for me. Tell him I'm not angry. I was just being stern because I love him and care about his future. I never meant to hurt his little feelings by it. And I'm sorry I lost sight of that. Gonzalez, please, please bring my little Bub back to me now. <sighs> you should maybe go get him yourself. Uh, sometimes I think this family might have some messed up dynamics. But I think they're all, I think their hearts are in the right place. I, I hope. Hey, mister, how was it? Did she like the present? She's not mad anymore? Yahoo! Woo! It's all thanks to you, mister. You're the person I respect most. After my dad. And, as a reward, I'll give you my entire fortune. Not that I have many coins, though. Oh, you didn't have to do that. You solved the trouble. The reward for that one is just cute. Oh, yeah, these guys are here now. It is you, isn't it, Mario? Well, it's been quite a while, hasn't it? I've come here with Bootler, yes, a little vacation to Poshley Sanctum. I hadn't left the mansion in ages. I figured it was time to turn some heads on the road. Why? <laughs> but what a nice surprise to see you. Feel free to be overwhelmed by my beauty. Lady Bo, your beauty is like, like the song of a nightingale in the evening. Indeed, I feel you've grown into a fine girl who'd make your ancestors proud. So, uh, I didn't know what this was a reference to my first time playing this game, and I was extremely confused. <laughs> That's Bo. Wait a second! Mario, exactly what is your relationship with her? Tell me now! <laughs> Just kidding. I always wanted to say that. But you did go on an adventure with her, right? Tell me sometime, okay? That's Bootler. He's Bow's butler. But what exactly does a butler do, anyway? It looks like he only listens to Bo, so I guess he wouldn't answer me if I asked. These are characters from the original Paper Mario. You don't have to know that to sort of appreciate that they're here, but these, uh, at least Bo, I don't know about Bootler, but at least Bo was definitely a fan favorite, excuse me, a fan favorite partner. And yeah, she's one of my favorites too, she's really cool. So, uh, let's go back to the Trouble Center together. I don't necessarily... Well, I don't even want to say that. I don't have plans right now to play the original Paper Mario on my channel. I'd love to. I don't have the setup to play N64 games. That's basically what it comes down to. I'm not ruling it out. It's definitely something I'd like to do in the future, but it's not a game that I'm going to try to figure out all the new technology just to do when I've got a lot of other games that I want to do first. Wonderful game, though. Can't recommend it enough. I believe it's on NSO, so if anybody has Switch and they have the online, be a good option. We've got one more trouble left, and it is a doozy. Swab, erase that graffiti. I need someone to go to the 50th floor of the Pit of 100 Trials for me, Shaboom. So I need someone pretty tough, Shaplowy. For details, please see me next to Cannon Statue and Far Outpost Shaboomity. Well, that is something I'm going to have to do on screen because I absolutely cannot make you sit make you make you sit through me doing the first 50 floors of the pit again. So I'm actually going to hold off on that for now, and let's see if there's anything else we can do first. We can probably get another tail from Grifty. At least one, I would think. Well, I would hope, anyway. Let's find out. After this, I think my next move might... Well, my next move is going to be organizing my inventory. Let's see, anything new? No! Alright, we've heard the entire story. I'm going to go to the shop. I'm going to organize my inventory a bit. And I will see you if and when there's something I want to do with that, or I'll just explain what my next move is. I've done a lot of reorganizing. The first thing I did was I took all of our uh, healing items and all of our like offensive items, power punches and stuff, and I sold them because we don't need them anymore and I needed the inventory space. Except for the shroom steak and the shroom crepe. These were made by using ultra shrooms, and I wonder... If cooking them together might get us that, like, fancy zest dinner deluxe thing. Probably not. But guess what? We don't need them anymore. And we don't really need the money either. So I guess we will find out. Yeah, that didn't do anything. Oh well. 
So I've got a bunch of other stuff to experiment with as well. I've got some poison shrooms that I've got things I can do with. I've got a couple ultra shrooms, some jam and jellies, a couple cake mixes, a couple gold leaves. I will mix things together and let you know if anything actually works out. Actually, no, there is one that I know is going to work. And that's the cake mix and the jam and jelly. That gives you the jelly candy. Replenishes 64 FP, the most powerful healing item in the game, and it's totally overkill. I don't think anyone will ever even see 64 FP. So now I'm going to poke around a little bit, do some experimenting, and see what comes out of it, if anything. I found the shroom broth. It's a poison shroom with a golden leaf, which means all those other poison shrooms I made to mess around with are going to go completely to waste, but oh well, I'm just glad that I have it. It gradually replenishes HP. It's just another one of those slow shroom items. Not the best, certainly not worth going through the entire chain to get it, but we have it now. What else do I have to play around with? Um, I think I wanted to try, I want to try doing some stuff with cake mixes because if we look at our recipe list here, where'd the, where'd the shroom broth go? Shroom broth, oh, shroom broth is here, okay. So we've got this item here, which looks like it's a cake mix item. I'm fairly certain that you can get this. It says cake mix and gradual syrup. We got it with a cake mix and a, and a maple syrup. I'm pretty sure a cake mix and a golden leaf will actually get this too. And a cake mix and a golden egg. But I am going to find out. And this, this has to be a cake mix item. So I'm going to go around the world, do whatever I need to do, and just put stuff together with cake mixes until I find something that works. So let's try step one of that here, and then the rest of that I'm going to be doing off screen and let, until I figure out what works. So let's try our cake mix with a golden leaf and see if this doesn't give us a cookie. Okay, it actually gave us nothing, so I was uh, incorrect there. Alright, back to cake mixing. Just so you know, another way to get a shroom steak is by cooking an ultra shroom and a golden leaf. Total waste of both. Same using a life shroom instead of an ultra shroom. I've picked up a bunch of cake mixes as well as a variety of ingredients from around the world. And let's see if I can get a hit. Well, I was right about the cake mix and the egg making a cookie, so let's keep going, I guess. Life shroom just gets you a regular shroom cake. Super shroom also gets you a regular shroom cake. Slow Shroom also gets you a Shroom Cake. There's a lot of ways to get this item. Cake Mix and a Gradual Syrup is yet another way to get a Zest Cookie. Well, this whole thing was a bust. <laughs> um, admittedly getting to the point where I'm kind of starting to give up. So I'm going to take a break now, and what I'm going to do next is I'm going to fill up on items and get all of the rewards from the shop points. I guess I'll just, uh, cut in whenever we get a reward. So remember how I said I was going to cheat a little bit? I am filled up with mysteries, and when you cook a mystery, usually you get a mistake, but sometimes you get something else, and sometimes you get something that might have taken two things to cook. So I'm going to cook up all these mysteries, I'll show you anything I get, and maybe I'll get one of the recipes I'm missing. Guess what? I got it! <laughs> Cheating. Alright, let's see how I was supposed to do that. A zest dinner is made by mixing a mushroom with a horse tail. I thought that was an uh, omelet meal. Didn't somebody tell us about that? I could swear Wonky told us that mixing a, a mushroom with a horse tail gets a, an omelet meal. Oh, well, because I'm mixing that up somehow. I officially ran out of ideas and ended up just looking up the rest of the recipes. One I'm a little bit ashamed of. I feel like I had this idea, and if I just kept at it a little bit longer and been persistent, I probably could have guessed this one. But let's cook a fresh pasta 
with an Ultra Shroom. This is the Zest Deluxe. I should have guessed this because cooking a regular mushroom with the pasta gives you the Zest whatever one I was using before. But, well, other than that, I'm very happy I looked the other ones up because there is no way in the world I was ever going to guess this. So first, if you cook any of the three Zest items, the Zest Dinner, the Zest Deluxe, and then the other one with like the two cones on it, with a Courage Shell of all things, you get... Wow, that's all I can say. I'm not sure why, but this is what came out. Whoa. It's a Courage Meal! Hard food made by Zest Tea. Throw it to attack an enemy. I think I might have mentioned something before about there not being a meal with the Courage Shell, and that was the next game. I guess I was just thinking of this, but I did not remember how to get it. I'm not sure how anybody would figure that out, quite frankly. But the last dish is actually even more random. You need to cook a Mango Delight with a Mystic Egg. And you get Love Pudding. A zesty cake makes, makes you invisible, electrified, or sleepy, so it's basically just the peach tart. How anyone is supposed to figure that out is beyond me. But there it is. I believe that fills out the recipes. Yep, that's everything. Here they all are. And I'm proud to say that I remembered or rediscovered most of them by myself. I would say 51 or 52 or whatever out of 57 is pretty good. Maybe the next time I play the game, I'll remember everything. So we're full on recipes. We're full on badges. There is, however, one tattle that we're missing. So I'll meet you when I have that. There it is. We've seen Amazing Daisies before, but we had to defeat them as soon as possible, so uh, we didn't actually tattle them. I feel like if you're missing one tattle, this is probably a good candidate for what it is. That's an Amazing Daisy. This mystical daisy is like the rarest thing ever. Max HP is 20, attack is 20, and defense is 1. Since it has such high HP and runs away really quickly, it's almost impossible to beat. Plus, this lullaby has massive attack power, so if we're low on HP, we need to scram. You gotta think hard about whether to fight or bolt. Well, that thing's probably gonna run away, but I'd love the experience. So I think there's only one thing we can try here. I don't know if this is gonna work. The Maisie Daisies might be immune to this. At the very least, this should get rid of the other Daisy, and if it doesn't get the Amazing Daisy, I think they're less likely to run away when they're at full health, although I'm not sure about that. Yeah, I didn't get it. I think it's immune. Ooh! <laughs> I'm trying to think of, I think, if I do a Supernova? Can I do a Supernova? Yes. Okay, we're gonna supernova, and then somebody can do five damage. Either Vivian or Yoshi can do it, actually. Focusing on uh, mashing here. And yeah, it's still the Sapphire Star. I think that's uh, actually just a mistake. I think they meant to have that be the Crystal Star. That's like, making the lines. Okay, that's 15. And Melon can finish this up. I think. <laughs> yeah, there we go. And that gives us a cool 39 experience, which levels us up. And now I'm stuck between wanting to get HP just to make it look nice, because we don't really need stats anymore. I'll do BP. Just for old time's sake. Figure out... <laughs> Mario became a superstar! Next battle, Mario's crowd and stage get even bigger! Perfect! I'm so glad that happened before the end of the game. So I guess I will show- well, I don't even know if I need to show that off, because I am going to be doing that bonus video of doing the Glitz Pit. I was going back and forth on whether I actually want to do that, because... 
hello. Realistically, nothing really changes, but that's not quite true. Jolene's dialogue changes. She introduces all of the um, all of the fighters again. So yeah, I think I am gonna do the pit as an extra bonus episode, or the glitz pit that is. And I think if you want to see what the superstar stage looks like, looks like, I'll just have you watch that. Eh, I guess I can get into a battle here too. It's a real fancy stage. There's even more audience, well, there aren't yet, but there's a capacity for even more audience members in the crowd. And let's do a stampede. Again, for old time's sake. There are some new effects that happen on the stage, just some extra pyrotechnics. As far as I know, they don't actually do anything except look funky. That you are going to have to watch the bonus episode to see, because I'm not going to just sit here, you know, fighting random low-level enemies until I get the random pyrotechnics. <laughs> ah! I forgot it was still a tube. Alright, I think that, well, let's, let's take a look at our catalog. We've got 124 out of 124 tattles. I will consider doing a bonus episode where I go through all of this. I'm not going to read it out loud, it's too much. But if this is easily available on the wiki, then I think I'm not going to bother with it, frankly. But that's all the tattles, all the badges, all the recipes. We never actually read the descriptions for the crystal stars. Diamond Star, the object Koops' father found in Hooktail's belly. Emerald Star, the object you got from the puny alder in the Great Tree. Gold Star, the object Jolene gave you after defeating Grubba. Ruby Star, the thing you got by beating Dupless, the body thief. Sapphire Star, the object you got after not really defeating Cortez. Garnet Star, the very unread herring real thing from Poshley Sanctum. And the Crystal Star, the object you got out of Magnus Von Grapple 2.0. That's all the Crystal Stars, and here's the map. There's actually descriptions for all of these places. This, I think I'm going to put into the dialogue bonus episode. This will be the, a way to close that out. So I'll get all of the dialogue in the world, and then I'll end out by reading all of the descriptions of the places. That's going to be a longer bonus episode, because if I recall correctly, every place has new dialogue now. But that's why I throw it into a, <laughs> throw it into a bonus episode, so people who don't care don't need to be bothered by it. Well, that about covers it. I think I'm going to meet you guys in Far Outpost so we can do that trouble. Here's the man who's hiring us to go back down into the pit. You agreed to help uh, help for my trouble, Shaplui. Thanks to you, Shaboom. There is dungeon under Rogueport called Pit of a Hundred Trials, Shakao. I heard if one writes wish on wall of 50th floor, then wish come to true, Shapop. I use special big explosion to get down to 50th floor and write wish, Shakrak. And then I realized whole thing was hoax, Shadoop. I risked life getting down there for useless graffiti. I wanted a race, Shashoom. I would erase it myself, but I don't think I could get down there again, Shakroom. So, could you go to 50th floor of Pit of Hundred Trials and erase graffiti? Please, Shablu! Anything for a trouble... poster. <laughs> well, I'll meet you guys down there. There's no way I'm making you watch me do all that again. We've made it to the 50th floor. It was entirely uneventful. I wonder what the graffiti says. There's graffiti on the wall here. Swab's wish. I want to get married to Bobo to Bobolink, my dear love, in a shocker wedding. I want us to have 22 kids so we can start a soccer team, Shablui. This graffiti was scrawled on with a fierce hand. It might never come off. Well, lucky for us, we can just uh, destroy the wall. There we go. And that actually reminds me. If you hold the button to use Bobbery's bomb attack, he just blows up in your hands. I will see you back in uh, Far Outpost. Okay, let's tell this guy we did his trouble. So, you erased my graffiti, Shapaf? You erased it, Shashloom! I am so grateful to you. But it is not like I can confirm whether you actually erased it or not, Shabu. Oh well. I guess I will just trust you, Shashakity. Take this reward, Shapal. Zesty made it for me when I told her how much I was missing the snow, Shafoom. You got a snow bunny! Unfortunately, that won't tell you how to get the recipe for it. I suppose I will find out if you can do this trouble without actually going down there. I'll uh, put that in some bonus video if I ever end up finding out. I am going to start trying to fulfill my own wish now. But you cannot tell anyone what it is, Shafoom. Promise me, Shakroom. 
You solved the trouble. That is the last trouble. There's a couple more, like, loose end things that I want to do before I end the episode. And before I meet you back in Rogueport, there's actually something else I want to show you with Bobberay. I'm going to need to get into a battle for this, so i got to take Bump Attack off. Let's fight one of these guys. Alright, let's get Bobbery out. And if you do Bobbery's bomb attack and don't press anything, the move will obviously fail, but the audience likes it! <laughs> they cheer and they give you two star points, or what, whatever, the filling up your star power. Now I'll meet you guys back in Rogueport. I'm not totally sure where to put this in, so I'm just going to show it now. If you come back to the Bogley Tree after you beat Chapter 2, this doesn't even have to be after you beat the game. I could have done this a lot sooner. This is the room where we found Ms. Mouse. This was the key. There was an Ultra Shroom in here. If you look behind this bush... Oh, maybe it's a random bush. There he is. You have to actually talk to him and find him and talk to him. A little jabby baby! It's a jabby baby! And you get a free mushroom! More importantly, you get a scene that I bet a lot of people have never seen before. I certainly know I hadn't. I just found out about this very recently. We made it back to the Trouble Center. Only trouble is, there's no more troubles. We haven't had any troubles come in lately. Maybe you've solved all the world's troubles already. I suppose that's good, but it's terrible for business! <laughs> yes, indeed. Also, I can't believe I didn't do this earlier, but we gotta go find out what was in that treasure chest that Frankly mentioned. You seem pretty cheery, and as always, I am happily busy with my research. By the by, do you know what was in that treasure chest we found in the palace? It contained... A dried shroom! Oh no, it's nothing to be disappointed by. Now we know for certain that people indeed ate mushrooms a thousand years ago. This is a groundbreaking anthropological discovery. Whatever you say, frankly. I think I'll stay here and continue my research a while longer. Yes, I'm fond of this place. Feel free to drop by anytime you like. Oh, right. We still have to read that Super Luigi book we got. Super Luigi Volume 5, Journey's End. At long last, Luigi crossed the threshold of Hate Song Tower. Luigi rallied his allies. We will defeat the Chestnut King. We must! Friends by his side, Luigi at last faced the, the fell Chestnut King. But then he heard a voice and spun to see the fair Princess Eclair. She told our hero the painful truth. The evil Chestnut King was actually her true love, made monstrous by Crepe in a bid for the throne. At that moment, the villainous Crepe appeared. The marvelous compass, please. Hand it over, and the Luff Empire will rule again. Mwaha! Luigi and co. were no match for the mighty crepe, for the might of crepe, their true enemy. But then the compass piece in Eclair's tiara shone forth. It bestowed the future sight on Luigi. Knowing crepe's every move, he smote the fiend with his mallet. And with that, it was all finally over. Luigi and his friends parted, leaving the Waffle Kingdom in peace. But Luigi regretted not gazing farther into the future. He longed to see the Wafflers gathering on Princess Eclair's wedding day. He wanted to see her beauty, and who stood at her side. But it was not to be. Luigi went back to his humble home, which remained exactly as he had left it, a cold comfort for his heavy heart. Taking up a book he had been reading, Luigi tried to read, but his long trial had sapped his strength, and he soon fell asleep. Luigi dreamt of his friends and his beloved Princess Eclair, and sleeping, and, and sleeping Luigi spoke, I shall return. The end. Yeah, that, uh, that certainly does cover, and then a bunch of other stuff happened. I can see why Luigi wouldn't necessarily want to talk about that, seeing as he was in love with Princess Eclair. There's just a couple more things I want to show off. First of all, I was able to get the high score in the tube game. Not able to get the one with the boat game. If I can ever get it, I guess maybe I'll show it at some later hypothetical date, but don't hold your breath on that one. I'm sure you can find out what that dialogue is anyway. But, since we got the other high score, let's go see what Lala has to say about that. Oh my, customers aren't allowed back here. What? You got another high score? Ugh, fine, whatever. Um, 
The other day, a customer named Arfur asked me out to dinner. But I said no. I mean, I don't even know him, right? Still, I wonder if he really likes me. I just don't get it, though. What could he like about me? I mean, really? Okay, that's all for now. How embarrassing. Maybe I'll tell you more about me if you get another high score, alright? We'll just put that in the you should play the game yourself category for now. <laughs> I'm sure Lala has plenty, plenty of charming qualities, although I do think she's right for not going out with a customer. There's just two more things I want to show now. First of all, there's something with the inn. If you stay at the inn 50 times, something happens. And obviously I'm going to do that off screen. You're not going to have to watch me do it. But I shall be doing it. Also, oh, we haven't talked to Luigi yet. He doesn't have a partner with him. I wonder if he's got more of the story. I've been catching a breather here, you know, reflecting back on all my adventures. It's been a long road, bro. Want to hear what happened? Let's see. Oh, yeah, I think I might have did hate- yeah, I did hate Song Tower in a, a different file. So let me just get that checked off. Either that or I just, like, didn't save or something. But we saw this in a- in a bonus video, or maybe in, in a regular video. Here we go. Super Luigi book. Actually, know what? This guy actually novelized my quest. He's been interviewing me. He was actually interviewing me here at the inn during breaks for my adventure. I didn't think anyone reading would be interested. I, I didn't think anyone would be interested in reading a book about Luigi. But Super Luigi came out recently, and check this out, bro. Here in Rogueport, I've set a new record for consecutive weeks at number one on the bestseller list. Oh, <laughs> hooray for Luigi, bro! I started reading it the other day, but it's an encyclopedic account in multiple volumes. Excruciating detail, bro. It's like a history book. Seemed like one anyway. They've gotten into the sh uh, the shop here in Rogueport. How about you snag a copy, bro? I did. Luigi should have more confidence in himself. He's got fans. We've met a few. Well, remember that he said there was a reporter hanging around here. I'm gonna sleep at the inn a few times. It finally happened. Wow, congratulations. You've stayed at an inn 50 times. Thank you so much for your patronage. I know it's a bit sudden, but we've put together a 50th state party! Now give me your best just woke up face! Say cheese! Yeah, that was great! And next, we have a lovely present for you. 200 coins! Not enough coins to make up for the 50 times that you had to stay at the inn to get this scene. This is probably one of the more remote scenes of the game. I hope you'll keep staying at inns in the future. Now have a good day and thanks again. I suspect that might have been the reporter that interviewed Luigi since he was here. There's one last thing I'd like to show and I'm going to have to jump to a different save file to show it. So I'll meet you back in a second. This is my original test file that I used to make sure the game would actually run. And in it, I went ahead and got up the money to buy all of the badges from the shop. That means I have multiple copies of quite a few of them. Um, I'm not totally sure what all my, uh, all my, my BP is being used up by right now, but I've got multiple copies of a lot of badges. If you ever miss a badge in the field, like let's say you hit a badge block and you don't pick it up and it goes away, it comes to the shop, so it's not like you ever miss it. But here it is, the empty badge shop. And if you say you want to buy badges, what kind of badges interest you? I'm terribly sorry, we currently don't have any badge stockpiles at all! Probably one of the most remote lines in the entire game. And with that, we are done here. There's going to be two bonus episodes coming out for sure. The dialogue after the game, which I found out is actually not going to be as long as I thought, because the only place that has any different dialogue besides Rogueport is Glitzville, and that has to do with you beating the pit. You can do it at any time. And speaking of that, that's the other episode that's going to come out, is me going through the pit a second time, and I actually really recommend you watch it, because it's not just going to be showing Jolene's different dialogue. I got a very rare stage effect. I'm going to leave it up to you to, to find out which one it was, but I will tell you that once you get a superstar stage, two new things can happen. They're both very rare, and you can go through many, many playthroughs of the game without ever seeing them. This is the first time I actually got one. 
One is a meteor, which will come down and hit everyone on stage, and if you don't block it, it'll make you dizzy. And another one is a Bowser statue, which will come down on one half of the stage, and if you don't block it, it'll confuse you. You'll have to find out which one I got. Other bonus content may or may not be coming out now, soon, sometime later, before or after the next series is out. We'll just have to see what my schedule allows and what I feel up to doing. So thank you very much for watching this Let's Play of Paper Mario Thousand Year Door, and hopefully I'll see you in the next Let's Play for a direct sequel to something I've already done before. Bye-bye!